My name is Kathleen Stefanson. I live in the Cleveland area. I live by Lake Erie and the Metro Parks, and I'm there every day because I love being outside. I'm also a registered dietitian, which means I know a lot about food and how to stay healthy by eating healthy foods, in particular fruits and vegetables. I, I love fruits and vegetables, and one thing I do know is that most people don't eat enough fruits and vegetables, and kids don't eat enough fruits and vegetables. So I've written some stories to help kids learn a little bit more about eating fruits and vegetables. The first story I wrote was The Fruit Flies Picnic. And The Fruit Flies, Flies, Flies Picnic, what inspired me to write this book is, again, wanting to teach kids to learn a little bit more about fruits and vegetables and the colors and why they're important for your body and how they keep you healthy. But I was thinking about fruit flies and how, you know, a lot of times in our kitchen we might see fruit flies flying around bananas or other fruit because fruit flies love fruit. And so I thought, what a great idea to have the fruit, fry, fruit flies teach children how to eat fruits and vegetables and the importance of eating particularly fruits. So I'm gonna go ahead and read for you The Fruit Flies Picnic. Deep in the forest, five playful fruit flies are preparing for a very colorful picnic. And in this picture, the fruit flies are parachuting down a tablecloth to put on their picnic table. Once the picnic table is set, the fruit flies will scurry away and bring back their favorite fruits. Here I come, Gracie yells as she sets the plump red strawberry on the table and flies away. She waits for others to bring their fruits. Look out below, Zach shouts as he lets go of his yellow star fruit. Here we go, Ben sings as he opens his arms and drops his green kiwi. Yum, yikes, yeeks. This is fun, Jake says as his cherimoya slowly bounces to the middle of the table. Yippee, yay, yahoo, we're almost done, Nicholas shouts as his blueberries whirl through the air. As the last blueberry lands on the table, the fruit flies race to their seats. There's an excited silence. Each fruit fly will take a turn and share something about the fruit they brought. Let's begin now, boys, Gracie says, holding up the red strawberry. You can eat the tiny seeds on the outside. Each fruit fly takes a bite. That strawberry looks pretty delicious. Gracie tells her friends that red fruits keep their heart strong and their memory sharp. As she speaks, the fruit flies eat the whole berry and giggle as the juice tickles their tongues. Gracie asks her friends if they can name five more red fruits. We have watermelon, cherries, red apples, raspberries, red grapefruit. Can you name five more red fruits? Next, Zach picks up the tiny the shiny yellow star fruit. It twinkles in the sunlight as the tart brown seeds fall to the ground. He looks like a star. Delighted, the fruit flies finish every shiny starry bite, knowing that yellow and orange fruits keep their heart strong and their vision clear. Zach asks his friends if you can name, if they can name five more yellow or orange fruits. Oranges, papayas, cantaloupe, apricots, pineapple, can you name five yellow or orange fruits? Now it's Ben's turn. He holds up the fuzzy brown-skinned kiwi. Inside, bright green fruit surrounds a circle of black seeds. I love kiwis. Green fruits help keep our vision clear, and they also help keep our bones and teeth strong, Ben says. Thrilled, the fruit flies gobble up the rest of the green kiwi. They ate the whole thing. Ben asks his friends if they can name five more green fruits. Green apples, green pears, honeydew melon, grapes, avocados. Can you name five more green fruits? Then Jake picks up the heart-shaped cherimoya. Most of his friends have never seen this fruit before. White, tan, and brown fruits also keep your heart strong, he says. Jake splits the fruit in half and tosses the yucky black seeds on the ground. The fruit flies taste the creamy white fruit inside. The familiar flavors of pineapple, papaya, and banana surprise them. So with the cherimoya, you do not eat the seeds. They're not so good for you, but the fruit is. Jake asks his friends if they can name five more white, tan, or brown fruits. We have white peaches, white nectarines, bananas, dates, brown pears. Can you name five white, tan, or brown fruits? Finally, Nicholas shouts, look, there's a star on top of my blueberry. If you touch it, a blue star will appear on your finger. Soon, all the flies have stars on their fingers. 
Blue and purple fruits help keep our memories sharp and our bodies healthy as we grow, Nicholas tells them. Happily, the fruit flies eat the stars and then devour the entire berry, including the tiny seeds. So you can eat the whole berry, including the star and the seeds. Nicholas asks his friends if they can name five more blue or purple fruits. Blackberries, Concord grapes, raisins, plums, figs, I love all of those. Can you name five more blue or purple fruits? By now, the flies' tummies are full of fruit and their cheeks are full of smiles. They relax and think about all the different colors of fruit. Together, they have tasted a red strawberry, Gracie had that, a yellow star fruit, a green kiwi, a white cherimoya, and a handful of blueberries. They have learned which color fruits keep their hearts strong. Can you name the colors? Red, yellow, and orange, white, tan, and brown. They remembered which color fruits keep their memory sharp. Can you name the colors? Red, blue, and purple. They see which colored fruits keep their vision clear. Can you name the colors? Green, yellow, and orange. They know which colored fruits makes their bones and teeth strong. Can you name the color? Green, green, very important for us. They are glad these colored fruits keep their bodies healthy as they grow. Can you name the colors? Blue and purple. The fruit flies have also discovered that they can eat the seeds and skins of some fruits, but not others. They are amazed by all the shapes and sizes of fruits. Nicholas, Gracie, Jake, Ben, and Zach are thankful for so many delicious fruits. Someday they hope to have tasted every fruit in the world. But most of all, they are grateful they could share fruit with friends. Thank you for listening. The next book I'm going to read is The Fish Who Wished He Could Eat Fruit. And this is actually about a fish who wished he could eat fruit. Um, and, and, um, and so he had a dream. He went on an adventure and went on a dream. And so we're going to learn about how he got to eat fruit. So The Fish Who Wished He Could Eat Fruit. Theo almost fell out of his fishbowl when he tried to reach the bananas hanging from the banana tree. Plop, back into the water he went. I almost got them, he thought. Oh no, they're gone. Bananas didn't stay long on the banana tree. Neither did the red apples, oranges, or purple grapes in the dish outside of his fishbowl. The children in the house were always eating the fruit set out each day. Theo wanted so badly to taste a piece of fruit. I'll try again tomorrow, he sighed. He stared out through the glass bowl, watching the children smile as they ate every last bite. I only want to be a fish if I can eat fruit, he thought. His eyes grew heavy as he fell fast asleep. As he began to dream, he saw himself swimming toward the bottom of the deep blue sea. Halfway down, he stopped in amazement. What's that, he wondered. He blinked a few times and hurried to the bottom. His eyes grew very large as he approached a beautiful rainbow water forest filled with bright and colorful fruits. Theo saw blueberries, black raspberries, and purple plums. He discovered green honeydew melons, kiwis, and green apples. He was excited about the red watermelon, strawberry, and red cherries. He was curious about the yellow pears, apricots, and mangoes. And he couldn't wait to try the bananas and the white peaches. He also saw other fish in the rainbow water forest. They were as colorful as the fruits. Theo was amazed at how beautiful and graceful the other fish appeared. At that moment, five of the brightest fish swam closer to him. You are all so beautiful, he said. That's because we eat fruit, said the twinkling yellow fish as she danced around the pear tree. Really, asked Theo. Absolutely, said the sparkling blue fish. And look how strong my gills are. He took one very deep breath and then swallowed a black raspberry. Watch how fast I can swim, said the shimmering red fish. She raced across the watermelon patch, leaving red bubbles behind her. I can see for miles, said the shiny green fish, as he pointed to a green grape on the other side of the forest. I love bananas, said the glowing white fish. Before Theo could spot the bananas, the white fish grabbed one for him to taste. Delicious, I love bananas too, said Theo. Finally got to eat a banana. 
For the next several hours, Theo and his five new friends played and laughed and tasted all the wonderful fruits in the rainbow water forest. Suddenly, one of the children bumped the fishbowl and Theo woke up. He shook his tail and realized he was back home. He looked around and he noticed one of the little boys staring at the bottom of the fishbowl. Theo looked around and saw two little trees growing right up from the bottom. Each tree held small, colorful pieces of fruit. Amazed, the boy said, I wish I was a fish so I could eat those fruits. Theo smiled and swam around his fishbowl, happy he was a fish, a fish who could eat fruit. Thank you for listening. And my last book today is Molly the Monkey Finds a Pineapple. And this is obviously about a monkey. And monkeys love bananas. And so she uh, found a pineapple and wanted to know, uh, would like some more of the pineapple. And so she went on a journey to find out how a pineapple grows because she wanted more pineapple. While under her favorite banana plant one summer day, Molly the monkey suddenly noticed a pineapple lying under a large green plant. Curious, Molly picked up the pineapple and tried a piece. Delicious, she shouted. Then she ate the rest of the sweet, juicy pineapple. Believing the pineapple had fallen from a tree, Molly began to swing, swing from branch to branch looking for more pineapples to eat. Along the way, she met a pretty little bluebird snacking on an apple. Good morning, Miss Bluebird, said Molly. Do pineapples grow on trees? Miss Bluebird replied, oh no, pineapples don't grow on trees like peaches, cherries, and plums. I think pineapples grow on vines. Molly thanked Miss Bluebird and jumped to the ground. She skipped through the forest hoping to find a pineapple growing on a vine. As she approached a small patch of vine, she saw a red fox nibbling on some grapes. Hello, Mr. Fox, said Molly. Do pineapples grow on vines? Mr. Fox replied, oh no, pineapples don't grow on vines like watermelons, green beans, and cucumbers. I believe pineapples grow on bushes. Molly smiled and waved at Mr. Fox as she hurried away in search of a pineapple. She was determined to find one. Across a small field, Molly saw a cluster of brightly colored bushes. As she reached the bushes, she noticed a beautiful deer chewing a mouthful of blueberries. Good afternoon, Miss Deer, said Molly. Are there any pineapples growing on these bushes? Miss Deer replied, oh no, pineapples don't grow on bushes like blackberries, raspberries, and cranberries. I bet pineapples grow in the ground. Molly said goodbye to Miss Deer and trotted away. She stared at the ground so she didn't miss a single trace of the pineapple. Eventually, she came face to face with a red squirrel, busily hiding nuts in the ground. Hi, Miss Squirrel, said Molly. Have you seen any pineapples growing in the ground? Miss Squirrel replied, oh no, pineapples don't grow in the ground like carrots and sweet potatoes and beets. I imagine pineapples grow on top of the ground. So obviously, none of these animals knew quite where the, the pineapples grew. Molly wanted a pineapple more than ever. She nodded, to thank, she nodded a thank you to Miss Squirrel and hurried by her. Molly knew she was getting closer to discovering where pineapples grew. Next, she came across a valley of leafy greens. As she walked through the greens, a rabbit hopped up to her and said, Hello, my friend. Are you looking for something? Hi, Mr. Rabbit, yet said Molly. I'm looking for a pineapple. Have you seen one growing on top of the ground among these leafy greens? Mr. Rabbit replied, oh no, pineapples don't grow on top of the ground like kale, spinach, and Swiss chard. I picture pineapples growing on a stalk. Mr. Rabbit turned and pointed to the tall green stalks across the river. Excited, Molly leaped to the other side of the river. She ran towards the stalks thinking she'd finally found a pineapple. When she reached the stalk, she spotted a big raccoon eating yellow corn. Mr. Raccoon, she said out of breath, where are the pineapples? Mr. Raccoon replied, oh no, pineapples don't grow on stalks like corn. He scratched his head. In fact, I'm not sure where pineapples grow. Molly felt very disappointed. She explained to Mr. Raccoon, I've looked for a pineapple in a tree, on a vine, in a bush. She've, I've searched in the ground. I've searched on top of the ground and on a stalk. 
She's looked just about everywhere. I've found apples and grapes, blueberries and carrots and kale and corn, but I haven't found a pineapple, she sighed. Molly thanked Mr. Raccoon and wondered what to do next. I think she was frustrated by then. As she turned to leave, she slipped on something round and hard and landed on her back. Mr. Raccoon raced over to see if she was okay. A little stunned, Molly sat up and, and a huge smile appeared on her face. She had finally found a pineapple. She slipped on that. Molly was fascinated to discover that pineapples grew on a plant that were only three feet high, no taller than her. Even Mr. Raccoon was surprised. Because he ate only corn, he didn't notice the pineapples growing right next to the corn stalks. Molly grabbed a fresh, juicy pineapple from the plant and began to eat it. Delicious, she shouted, looking around joyfully at the pineapple plants. Mr. Raccoon even tasted a bite. She thought about all the fruits and vegetables she'd found while looking for a pineapple. She decided to try some apple and grapes, blueberries and carrots, and kale and corn. Mr. Raccoon wanted to taste the other fruits and vegetables, too. Molly and Mr. Raccoon became good friends and returned to the places where Molly had discovered the other fruits and vegetables. They tasted every last one of them. It wasn't long before all the animals in the forest were eating a variety of fruits and vegetables thanks to Molly. Today you'll often find Molly the monkey and her friends sitting under her favorite banana plant surrounded by lots and lots of fruits and vegetables. Thank you for listening to Molly the Monkey Finds a Pineapple.